the elect, the remnant, chosen by God to be a part of the final generation before the Lord Jesus Christ comes back and sets up his millennial reign. That's who we are. Selected before you were even born. That's who we are. And now we're here. Could have been at any given time in history here on earth. Any time in the last 6,000 years. But here at the tail end of the last days. And we have a great example here in the Exodus, children of God, of being covered in the blood of Jesus and what that what happens with that. And you can cover yourself with the blood of Jesus at any time. During the day, during you cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Say, Father, I cover myself with the blood of Jesus Christ. That's all you have to do. You can think that. You're talking to God when you do that. You imagine yourself talking to the Lord, Father. Cover me with your blood. Father, I cover myself with the blood of Jesus Christ, and you cover yourself with that blood. His blood is light. His blood is light now. In the new, in these last days, his blood is light. The brightest light that you can even imagine. So cover yourself with his blood. Cover yourself with his light and live in repentance all day long. We will be doing things wrong all day long by accident because of habits, old habits, things that are inside of our, our bloodline, our DNA. And um, at the you know at the end of those things, we say, oh my goodness, I can't believe I did that. Or, or I shouldn't have done that. And then repentance is, Lord, please forgive me. Well, you don't even have to say please because you're actually already forgiven, but you're living in the life of repentance. You're saying, Father, I shouldn't have done that. I, you know, Lord, help me not to do that anymore. That's living in repentance. I want to become better. I want to become a better servant. I want to become a better son, you know, while I'm here on earth, Lord Jesus. I don't want to wait until I get to heaven to become better. I want to become better while I'm here and now. So help me. You know, asking the Lord for help, living in repentance, uh, living in uh, the, the, the state of, I want to be forgiven. I want to be approved by my father. You know, I want to be, I want a closer relationship with him. I want a deeper relationship with him. You don't need to go to him in all sorts of um, condemnation and shame. Because he loves you and he's going to, He's he has forgiven you. And he will continue to forgive you. But Cover yourself with the blood of Jesus all day long and live in repentance. Be aware of when you make mistakes so you can take those mistakes immediately unto God for help. And then you'll find yourself not doing those things less and less and less. Now we're here in Exodus and um, this is at the end of the 10. Well, this is actually the 10th plague here. You can go through the 10 plagues there in Exodus, Exodus of chapter 9, 10, and 11, I believe, and um, 12. Look it up on uh, Google, you know, the 10 plagues. And it explained to you, that it started out with bloody water. You know, everybody's water turned to blood, except the children of God, you know, the Israelites. And we are, we are the Israelites. Now here, um, Exodus 12, 12, it says, I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and I will smite all of the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment I am the Lord now if you look around the world today you can see that God is, is doing a lot of allowing should I say I don't know if he's exactly doing all these things himself but you know if the, the devil Satan he has to have permission to do certain things and God will let him because He's God, and God does whatever he wants to. And sometimes God does things, too, also, too. Like, God kept hardening, you know, Pharaoh's heart. I mean, he Pharaoh, Pharaoh would give in and say, okay, all right, you guys can leave. You know, Moses would come in and say, let my people go. And, and Pharaoh would say, okay, get out of here, get out of here. You know, after, you know, ten times, you know, you know, ten plagues, blood and lice and flies and frogs and locusts and, you know, golf ball size, 
baseball size hail coming out of the sky with fire, all of the uh, food, all of the animals dying off, all of the crops dying off and everything. You know, it, it was it, Egypt was just basically destroyed, but the 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 people of Egypt were untouched. And Pharaoh, he got the message, but God kept hardening his heart. And that's what happens when we, when people sin. When you don't live in repentance, your your heart can be hardened because you're not thinking about what you've done wrong. You could just kind of just keep doing that same thing and say, well, God will forgive me or I don't care or whatever kind of attitude. But you got, your heart can get a little harder and harder and harder. And then things be, actually become tougher for you um, the next time around, you know. So, um, so God is um, getting ready to um, un unleash the, the spirit of death here, and you get there's a spirit of death going across the earth now. There's a lot of people dying now. Um, number uh, thirteen says, "And the blood shall be uh, a token upon the houses." So, you know, being covered in the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of the Lamb, is you know a, on you. And you are the, you are the house of God. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Now that's very important in these today's times. We got viruses going on around, and we got um, you know all kinds of things happening um, across the world. You know, I'm not going to get into those things, but it's um, a lot of things. And you know what's going on in your own life, and what's going on in your own community, your own state, you know, your own town, and stuff. But, you know, when I see the blood, this is God Almighty himself talking, you know, in number 12, 13 of Exodus. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you. So cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Number 14, and this day shall be unto you a, mem a memorial, and you shall keep it keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. So do this all of the time. Okay, so let me get to, now are we getting down to fit number 15 here? Um, it says, seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Unleavened bread, uh, leaven is, is considered sin. That's ye that would be the yeast in the bread that causes the bread to rise and make it nice and soft and everything like that. Okay, so... We want our bread to, we want our lives to not have that, that yeast in it. Seven days ye shall eat unleavened bread. That's, that's every day. Okay, so we, we're, we're not wanting any kind of sin in our lives all the time, seven days a week. Even the first day you shall eat, put away the leaven out of your houses. Now, you, our bodies are the temples of God. That, that's, our, those are, that's our houses. Put away the sin out of our houses. We're pressing in to a higher and deeper relationship with God now. And so the less sin that's in there, the more he can dwell inside of our houses. So put away the sin out of your houses for whosoever eateth leavened uh, bread from the first day unto the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. So that's what happens when we continue to sin. When we don't live in repentance, when we don't cover ourselves in the blood of Jesus, when we don't walk with God, we're not pressing into a relationship with God. This is what happens. We get cut off. That soul shall be cut off. And that's very dangerous right there because uh, when your soul is cut off, you're, you're, you're not going to get blessed here on earth. And then you're, you're actually jeopardizing your future uh, eternal life, which no one wants to do because the, our lives are like five minutes long com compared to eternity, which is trillions and trillions and trillions of years. And more than that, trillions times a hundred times a hundred times a hundred times a trillion. It's, how, it's forever. So living in uh, covering yourself with the blood of Jesus every day and living a life of repentance, cutting out the sin you can do things one at a time, you know, you, you just, you, you got to go to God about every single thing that you're doing. You can't, can't hide anything from him. So you may as well just be honest with him. And that's what a re good relationship is based on. It's based on honesty. 
So cut off, cut cut out the, the, the unclean things in, in our lives. Then me first, you know. I don't like talking like this. I don't like teaching stuff like this. But, you know, some sometimes, you know, you just got to do what God says. And this is what he's been saying. And it's, it, it, because I don't want to see anybody's soul cut off. You know, I see people suffer all the time need, needlessly. Uh, you know, I've, you know, I've seen, I've, I've tried to advise certain people and I've, I've tried to stop doing this because I don't really don't like doing this. I advise certain people if they want their lives to be better, then you, maybe you should do this. Maybe you, you should pay your tithes. And, and I know it's the Lord tell, telling me to tell them these things, pay your tithes, you'll, you'll be blessed financially. You know, and then the person won't do it. And then they're, you know, once you hear and once you know what you're supposed to do, what, you, the, what the word of God says, you're accountable for it. So I, you know, you can, you know, actually make a person's life worse. By telling them, you know, what the truth is, and they, then they don't do it. So they're making themselves worse. And I and I feel guilty about that. So I, I hesitate to, to try to help people, you know, tell people, you know, the certain teachings out of the Bible. Because once you know it, then you have to do it. Because it's actually God speaking to you directly. And you just turn your back and disobedient, disobey God, then... Sometimes, you know, the, the reper repercussions are terrible. God can harden your heart or he can you can harden your own heart. And if your heart is uh, hardened, then you're going to turn around and walk back the other, other way, which is the wrong way. So we're going to try to keep walking towards the Lord. And uh, these scriptures are down in the description area. So subscribe to the channel. So just go ahead and smash on the subscribe button now. And, you know, also hit that thumbs up, that like button, too, because that helps the channel. And when you do that, other people around the world can can actually be able to see the video. It, the more of those, the more of those thumbs ups that there are, the, the more likely, you know, someone in Africa or, or someone in Australia or the UK or Canada is going to be able to, to, to see the video. And it might be the only thing that they need, you know. This is a um, End Times Last Day channel guys and you, you, you know subscribing to this channel you're going to learn about the you know you're going to go to the playlist and you're going to learn about the antichrist the new world order one world religion one world um government the uh, one world church the false prophet world bank the cashless society the mark of the beast world war three tribulation the rapture one world court the two witnesses, one world economy, the world, um, one world military force, and the economic collapse. So, and you want to know about these things because we're, like I said, we're the final generation. It's going to be happening this in this uh, um, final decade is coming up here. You know, the final ten or eleven years, and then Lord will be coming back. So that's what I believe, anyway. So that's that's just what I feel inside my heart. So anyway, Exodus, um, no, we're at, yeah, Exodus twelve, the twelfth twelfth chapter. We're going to go do a little bit out of uh, twelve through um, fifteen. It's in the description area. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. And I, you know, the people thank you for dying on the cross for them very, very much. Thank you, sir. We love you, Lord, Father. And we thank you for forgiving us of all of our sins, Lord Jesus, for everything that we've ever done wrong. Very gracious, very merciful, and Father, and we pray that we can cover ourselves daily with the blood of Jesus Christ. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ on ourselves, on our households, on our families, Lord Jesus Christ, that you will pass through. When you do pass through the land, Lord Jesus Christ, when your spirit of death passes through the land, Lord Jesus Christ, of Egypt, Lord Jesus Christ, night or day, you know, to, to, to go across, across and do its thing, Lord Jesus Christ, we want to be covered. We want you to pass us over, Lord Jesus. Pass us over, because right now we cover ourselves with your blood, Lord Jesus. And um, when you see the blood, Lord Jesus Christ, pass us over. Pass my household, pass all of my property over, pass my job over. Lord Jesus Christ, 
Pass the works of my hand over. Pass my pass over my children, Lord Jesus Christ. I cover my children with the blood of Jesus. My grandchildren, Lord Jesus. My land, my animals, Lord Jesus Christ. Pass us all over, Lord Jesus. And the plague shall not come upon us, Lord Jesus. And we thank you for no plague ever touching us because of your precious blood, Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray for all of our future generations. Well, this is the final generation, but we're praying, for, I'm praying, we're praying for our generation, Lord Jesus Christ, because we love our people. We love our church, churches and our communities and our countries and our states, Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that you save everybody, save every soul, Lord Jesus Christ. And help us, help me, help us. The people want to get the leaven out of their lives, Lord, out of their houses, the sin out of their lives, Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to help help us to be able to get these things out of our lives, you know, that do not belong in our lives. Each and every individual, Lord Jesus. Do you know what they are? And the people know what they are. And the people know what they don't want in their houses anymore. And whosoever shall eat leavened bread, um, the soul shall be cut off. Lord Jesus Christ, we want to live, Father. We want our souls to have eternal life and along with our spirits, Lord Jesus Christ. We love you, Father. We do all want to. We hate sin. The people hate sin, Lord Jesus. Give us power over that sin through the Holy Spirit, the power of the blood of Jesus, the power of discipline, being a true disciple, and the, the power of the, the will to do righteousness and what is right, Lord Jesus, now and for all eternity. And Lord Jesus, feed, shelter, and give fresh water to all of the hungry people around the world today. And soften the hearts of the people, Lord Jesus, so they can turn to you and know that you are really God. Every single individual. Save, save every soul. Once you start feeding them, sheltering them, and giving them fresh water, never stop. But let every, every, every soul, every person know that you love them very, very much. Keep them all once they're saved. In Jesus Christ's name, the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Subscribe to the channel, folks, and hit the like button so, so other people around the world can learn to pray and read out of the Bible. You guys have a great day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen.